Hey everyone, welcome to another Fratello Watches video. Um, I'm new, at least to the video game. You know this guy, I hope by now. Um, you were in the last video? The last? Yeah, we did the Seiko dive history yeah. video. Who watches that, right? <laughs> Everybody should. Um, well, if you don't know me, I'm Balaj, I'm also from Team Fratello, and I'm here with Mike. And something interesting, uh, which I don't know much about, he got the watch, um, he bought the watch actually, it's not in for review, and um, he's gonna, you're gonna talk us through the yeah, watch? Yeah, we're gonna um, talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So, this folks is the Krepas Megamatic 1200 meter. Can you tell me uh, what Krepas means? I cannot. It's a very long uh, acronym in Spanish. Uh, the the uh, microbrand company is it's a company that's been around for I guess ten plus years in um, out of Spain, and they are noted for making dive watches. Uh, they've got some of their own designs, but they do make a lot of uh, reissue type watches, and they seem to focus heavily on vintage Omega designs. And that's one of those. And this is one of those today, but it's a little bit different than some of the other models that they've made. Okay, so this one is based on. It is based an on an Omega design or an Omega that actually never went never, to production. Never, yeah, never, yeah. never existed, other yeah. than maybe a couple of prototypes, right? Yep. You can see it. I think you can see it, or from time to time, whenever it's in, on display at the Omega Museum, um, or if not, then you can you can Google it. Um, I think it's something that came out in 1982. Correct. And it had a quartz movement um, by heart. Can you tell me which one it was? 15, 1510. 1510. Mega quartz. Right. So it was um, it was um, a belated, low-prof, yeah, kind of variation um, with a quartz movement that never made into production, but then you know it, it remained a prototype. It was in a mega museum, and then Crepas. Basically took, took came the, out with a with a with a an homage to right. the, to a watch that you could never buy. But then this one is not uh, quartz. Obviously. Correct. It uses an Ida twenty eight twenty four automatic with date. Okay. And I I was uh, so this watch I think was released probably sometime in the last year at least it it kicked off on uh, Kickstarter, and I didn't take much notice of it. I thought it was pretty neat. And then our friend Patrick actually bought one and he received it and started posting some pictures of it and I started talking to him about it. And the more I looked at it, I thought, well, that's actually kind of cool because as we've said here, this is a watch that was never available for public consumption. Apparently when Omega was doing all this deep water testing, um, similar to what they did to develop the Ploprof, they had put in quartz movements because that was really all the rage in the early 80s. Uh, but the problem with the 1510 is that it was not thermally compensated. So at depth, you know, when it's super cold down there, they had concerns about reliability. Yeah. So the watch was still born. Like Balash said, you can see it in the museum and there are a lot of websites that have some really good historical material on it. Um, but what I liked about this is it really is an evolution of the Ploprof in the sense that it's got this huge um, crown guard. Crown guard. Um, and with Krepos, I believe you could actually order it, um, you know, to have it flipped around so you could do that. I, I chose to go with the traditional look where that, that crown is at uh, nine o'clock. It's actually quite comfortable. What do you have here? You have the, the and helium. There's a helium valve, which I don't think is historically correct, but at least, um, yeah, normally I'm not a fan, but on a watch like this, it's fine. I'm guessing uh, since the the history of the brand is into creating um, diving instruments, they wanted to create something that's actually usable for divers. And yeah, as such, the, the heat valve is something that that nowadays um, I guess divers would use. So that's why that's in there, right? Yeah, and I think you know we 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 follow the micro brand game pretty pretty strongly yeah. here, and, and and we'll talk about the package in a couple minutes, but. It always does feel like with micro brands, they do try to put in as much feature content as yeah. possible, right? To yeah. to to help uh, help the help the value proposition. So, whatever, it's there. Um, it's not intrusive, so it's fine. Um, 
So, some other notes about the watch, just the size, because it does look like a big watch and it is. It's huge and heavy. Yeah, and it's heavy. Um, it's 44 millimeters uh, by 46 and a half millimeters. And it, it, it looks, uh, I don't know what the width is, but 50, I, 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 I would say. Yeah, probably 50 laterally. I, I laid this next to a Ploprof, a vintage Ploprof, and actually the lug to lug is darn similar. So, so it's 24 as well as the Ploprof? Um, the bracelet is actually 22, mm -hmm. so I, I did try to slip the uh, vintage Ploprof bracelet in the Tropic strap yeah. you gave me, um, and it, it clearly doesn't fit. But yeah. on the wrist, if you've ever tried on a Ploprof, this is very similar. It actually fits a very small wrist like mine because it doesn't have that, that length, Yeah, um, and it's actually really comfortable. I mean, the crown on the left side does wonders. Yeah, you know? it's a nice, huge chunk of metal. Mm -hmm. It's it's. Not that heavy. I mean, it's a heavy watch, obviously. It's a thick watch, but it's it's a diving instrument, um, so it should be like that. And um, I, I think it's comfortable. I mean, I've, I've tried it on um, yesterday and today. Um, it's pretty neat. Um, I like the the case. I like the bracelet. I like how it's done. It's not wobbly. It's it's pretty sturdy, Yeah. Um, especially for the price, which probably we're going to talk about later on. But, but anyways, um, so it's a very, very nicely put together watch. Especially yeah. for the money. I, I think, um, you know, you can see the size of this massive crown. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, rear loading case, I believe the original was a front loader. Mm -hmm. um, uses a ceramic bezel, sapphire crystal, and I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with the way it's built. It feels like a really good quality watch. The, uh, the, the bezel has good tension, it's a 60 click, and the loom is great. Uh, the cool thing about this, uh, when it kicked off on uh, Kickstarter, and I think if you still order one today, although they're kind of at the end of, of availability here, you get a black and a navy blue dial, and you get these uh, sort of typical, what do you call these hands? Sword hands, Sword I Sword hands. But well, you can also get it with the hands that were in the original. In Omega, the original, right? which are plongeur hands. Yeah? yeah. And they look incredible. They're yeah. huge, they cover up a lot of the dial, and I'll probably have them swapped out because it's a little bit more faithful, maybe with the blue dial. Uh, but, but it really comes as a cool kit. You also get this bracelet, which is kind of similar to the original 1162, 1162 but yeah. a little bigger links. Exactly, the links are a bit, bit taller or, or thicker than the 1162. But if, it, if you have the 1162 on a, a Mark III, for example, or uh, I think even on a Mark II, now Mark II is 20 millimeter, but the Mark III is 22, then you can put on an if, Omega bracelet if, sure. you, if, if you want to go for that look. Um, then it comes with mesh, which actually can be sized, so I can actually size this down to my wrist. Both of them, well, the, uh, the Link bracelet has a, just a push button clasp, the mesh has a safety clasp, then it comes on rubber, which can be sized, uh, you know, that's something you're going to do once. And so you have to cut it. Right? Yeah, so you have to cut that, but it's got a safety clasp. It also comes with one of these uh, Marine Nationale style uh, straps. And yeah, then you get some extra spring bars, a screwdriver to help uh, adjust the bracelet and uh, deal with the end links. And polishing cloth, little vinyl roll, which is actually nice with four slots. And oh, it's, a, it's a leather roll, I think, huh? Is yeah, it? I don't know. I think it's, I'm guessing Anyways, that's. It's a watch roll for. Four watches. Four watches. Or the watch and, and, and the straps and bracelets. And they've got this advertised on, on the Crepus website for 699 euros plus VAT. So if you're in Europe, you can add your VAT. If you're ordering globally, then you get to deal with customs if they yeah. so choose to step in. But I thought for that price, it's a pretty cool deal. What's in the VAT? It's about 800, 850. So it's still way below 1,000 euros. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can do much, much worse for a, for a, for a thousand euros. Than yeah, this one. you got something really distinctive, and like I said, I think solid and well made. You've got a trusted movement in there, and yeah. you know if you're you're talking about cars, I mean we know companies that do replicas, and there are even companies that come back and do continuation cars. I look at it like this: I'm not really into homage watches, but when you have something that you could never really buy anyway. I think it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool project. Yeah, it is for sure. It definitely is. It's really a quality product, as I said, under a thousand euros. If you're into vintage or vintage-inspired divers' watches or, or tools or instruments, as Mike said, 
You don't have to compare it to an Omega, it's not an Omega. It takes the inspiration, it's an awesome product, great price, and heavy, if, chunky. If, if you're somebody who likes Omega and likes historic Omega yeah. divers, this would be a cool addition and exactly. probably the least expensive addition you could make to your collection. Yeah, especially with, among those watches. So. Yeah, great. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the link, hit the bell, follow us, like us. See you next time. Thanks.